Welcome back to Duke's Copy TV. I'm Elaine Stenson. The Italy global trade balance for July has improved to over 5.9 billion euro from over 3.6 billion euro in June. And this figure goes far beyond the figure expected, which was just over 4.1 billion euro. I'm joined on the line now by Alan McQuaid, who's chief economist with Marion Capital Group in Dublin. Alan, why do you think there's been such an improvement? Well, I think it's a combination. I mean, the, I think what's happened is that exports have improved at a faster rate, mainly due to an improving world economy. But I think as well, you're seeing the impact of austerity. I mean, imports are, are down again. And, you know, I think personal spending in Italy, like most other peripheral countries, is suffering. So imports are falling. And uh, with the world getting better, I mean, exports should continue to improve. And the problem I think Italy has is the, um, is the political impasse. You will need to see structural reforms there to make the economy more competitive, particularly when you see the euro exchange rate appreciating against the dollar. And there's only one or two countries in the eurozone, I think Germany and Ireland, which can exist uh, or can survive with a, competitively at the current exchange rate that the euro has against its greenback. Does this figure reflect on what's going on in the rest of Europe? And is this growth set to continue? Well, if you look at the, the data we've seen recently in terms of, of the Eurozone economy, I mean, Germany is, is performing well, France is, it seems to be recovering as well, and there are even signs that the peripheral countries are on the road to recovery. So if the Eurozone continues to pick up and the US and UK economies uh, recover as well, then you'd expect global demand in general to improve, which will make it easier for um, countries to, to export their goods. But you know, a lot is going to depend on, on what happens to the world economy post the FOMC meeting on Wednesday. If we get tapering and, and bond purchases, that could spook markets. And, you know, you could see interest rates go up, which could have a negative impact on consumers and on the economies as a whole. And plus the fact, you know, the global the situation in terms of, sorry, the geopolitical situation is still very uncertain. The situation in Syria seems to have improved, but anything that could detrimentally impact on oil prices, push them higher, would therefore hit consumers negatively in the world economies, uh, particularly in Europe. Okay, and according to a recent report from the UN, global trade is likely to remain sluggish for many years, and emerging economies that have depended on exports to fuel their transformation will have to find new sources of growth. Alan, in light of these new figures, do you agree with this statement for both emerging markets and for developed markets? Some countries will perform better than others. I think the, the countries that have made transitions to make their economies more competitive should continue to do well. But again, I think a lot depends on, on what happens to the world economy in, in the environment of, of higher interest rates. I mean, I think the market is going to take the view that once the Federal Reserve starts bond tapering, that ultimately that will lead to, to higher interest rates down the road. Higher interest rates too in the UK and Europe will follow, albeit not for some time yet. But I think developing countries are benefit from the fact of cheap dollar etc. and low interest rates in the States, but they could be hit badly by you know, a sudden change in the situation in America. I think, again, some of them will, will do better than others. I think India looks particularly, but other countries, I think, will survive. And when we've seen their currencies weaken in recent weeks on speculation of what's going to happen with the Fed. So weaker currencies will make them, some of those countries more competitive and will help their exports. But I think in general, the world economy, even with recovery, is going to be sluggish by historical standards. And therefore, you'd have to say that certainly in the immediate future, global trade or the positive impact from global trade is not going to be as strong as it would have been in previous recovery periods. Alan, thanks for that. And thanks for joining me on the line today. And that's all we have time for for now, but do check back for more updates and interviews from the Ducoscopy TV team. Bye for now.